Welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode 257. I'm your host, Chris Britton. Let's go. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day including all of your latest HeroClix singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And don't forget, you can still use code DIAL5 at checkout for 5% off your order, which I totally forgot to do in today's order that I put in to work <laughs> cool stuff. Forgot to use our own Not code, cool. this guy. Yeah, but I emailed <laughs> him, so uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Uh, joining me in the studio again this week is my sexy ranch hand co-host, Calder Ness. What's going on, Calder? Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. Let's get rowdy indeed. Normally we like to start us off with what made us happy this week. Um, mine is in the news section, so I'm going to skip mine this week, what made me happy. Other than I saw Detective Pikachu, that was okay. I kind of liked it. Saw it with my mom and Jaylene, so that was cool. Past that, what made you happy? Hey, what uh, what card did you get for Detective Pikachu? Did they hand you out uh, Pokemon cards? Well, you know what's funny about that? Uh, <laughs> I dropped my mom and Jaylene off like to the door, and Jaylene uh, was like, okay, I'll go get our tickets. I was like, cool, while I went and parked the car. By the time I got in, um, yeah, they had already purchased the tickets, and apparently Jaylene didn't like ask for cards or anything, so I was just out of luck. Dude, that's a shame, because it honestly makes you attached to, like, whatever in the movie. So I got, like, snubble, right? Like, ugly-looking little thing. Yeah. Little weird. But, like, when it came on screen, I was like, oh, yeah, that's the card I got. Like, it's a really cool <laughs> gimmick they have, because yeah. you kind of feel attached to the character. I was with another person. They had Magikarp. And they're like, oh, there's my guy. Oh, what the heck? He just, you know, blank, 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 you know, whatever. So it's pretty cool. I, I feel like the card thing is a great idea. We all get Pikachu, and then you kind of feel a little, little attached to your person, so it's kind of neat, you know? All right, that is cool. That is cool. Uh, uh, so while we're talking about cards, before you move on, uh, my mom – I picked up a box from my mom's house of, like, just random stuff. She's like, here, this is yours. And I looked into it, and it was none other than th – there was one card in this box, and it was a copy of Blue Eyes White Dragon. And I was <laughs> like, yes! Nice. <laughs> so I don't know why that made me so happy, but it did. What made you happy, though? Uh, what we have this week is I have been uh, toy hunting like crazy. So for Avengers Endgame, McDonald's has toys for them. They have not just the Avengers, not just the Avengers in their spacesuits, but they have 24 McDonald's toys that not all McDonald's locations have. So it's 12 just normal ones. So it's all the Avengers plus Captain Marvel and Thanos. And then it's 10 of the Avengers that are in the like pin particle suits or whatever space suits yeah and then there are two quote-unquote mystery ones which uh, are just the ones that aren't on the poster which is rocket and Groot. and so far i think i only need nine more out of the 24 so i'm really i'm getting close i'm really enjoying the hunt for those i've been to like five different mcdonald's's you know <laughs> so that's a cool parallel though like they were yeah. hunting for gyms and you're hunting for little plastic figurines Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> totally the same thing. The same trial and uh, strife I'm going through is very much on par. So, yeah. Right on. All right. Well, I said I was going to tell you what made me happy, but we need to get into the news section. All right. So, we got some news, some of which... It's about figures that came out this week. We got a lot of stuff from the Black Panther and the Illuminati set, but we'll start off with the non-Black Panther stuff. Tell me about some ROC information. Absolutely. So it's just a quick little update. Uh, the ROC has kind of ran out. They've been putting the they haven't been putting the three objects into the kits, and they have replaced them with rock action tokens. This happened because they kind of ran out of 3D objects. They need a fast replacement so um these are going to be red white black clear all sorts of stuff as an example two of each will be in a winter map kit this will allow players to collect and trade to get their colors of choice so i hope i can get some blue ones in our winter map kits i don't know if it's 
in the next winter map kit that our my men, my venue is going to get but we, we we'll see i know a lot of people have just an insane amount of objects there's only so many fire hydrants tires and squirrels that a man needs so these roc action tokens are really cool they also have some pretty big ones that are going to be for giant slash uh colossal size which is really cool so if you like giant pancake discs sitting under your colossals instead of little action tokens or beads just sitting next to your colossals then there you go so the roc's got cool little uh, action tokens coming up all right, cool. Next bit of information is we got the Battle for Wakanda OP kit. We got the sculpts for those, the digital renders, rather. We got Shuri. We have Man Ape. And one of my favorite villains in the Marvel Universe, which is actually Claw, believe it or not. Dude, Claw's awesome. Uh, he's just very strange. Although, I have been reading Black Panther recently, or like last month. Oh, yeah. And you remember Claw from, because he was in the Infinity Gauntlet storyline? And okay. in, when he says things, it's like an echo, you know, he, he's like, claw, 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 whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They That's awesome. totally threw that out, like that little, oh, like, quirk man. of what makes claw, man. claw. I love and, that in Secret Wars. Everybody thought he was going crazy, and he's like, I'm not crazy, AZ, AZ, AZ. <laughs> so dope. So I, I don't know what they did with him. He's changed as a character since the... I'm going to say the good old days of the Infinity. Good old days of having a, a like. terrible echo stutter. Yeah, so, but that's pretty cool. Um, let's see, which one is the new sculpt? The new sculpt's going to be Shuri, right? It's Shuri. And she's, yeah. like, wearing some really cool stuff with, like, a spear. I, I can really dig it, you know. So, it's like, they totally changed how her, like, her powers, well, she stopped being Black Panther in the comics. And okay. totally became um, this magician mystical character and starts using, like, all of these spells and stuff. So, if... This Shuri is anything like what is in the uh, Black Panther run that I read. It okay. probably has like probably like some telekinesis, perplex, probability control, oh. maybe something mm. like that, which will be completely different than when she was Black Panther. So I'm a little interested. Does she have like a vibranium hand there or something going on? Like uh, get the Evil Dead treatment? I'm kind of curious what happened there. I don't remember that happening. I mean, but it's been a really long time since I read. The lead up to the run of the Black Panther that I just got okay. done reading, so I don't really remember. But um, Man Ape and Claw are the reuse of the sculpts from which set was that? Uh, ADW. Thank so you. Avengers Defenders War. So okay, well that's interesting, and actually quite a few people I noticed really like that on are on, excited, yeah. yeah, are on Reddit, on Twitter, on Facebook, really really like this OP kit, and I'm genuinely excited because like <laughs> sure he's an awesome character, and so is Claw. So. Dude, Claw needs a power. That's like, what is love? Should be the name of it. Like, I would, I would lose it. It'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, let's move on. We have multiple previews from the Black Panther and the Illuminati set proper. And you want to start us off with something? Yeah, absolutely. I'll start us off on the lower rarity end with our rare AIM Blue Squad. Uh, a lot of people complained that a generic was a rare. If I have to remind people that they made a generic chase... One time, that was five years ago, so uh, maybe uh, feel feel a little lucky, huh? Other other bucko. So the way they're probably doing it is it's probably gonna be red is common, or maybe white is gonna be common, and then red will be uncommon, and then blue is gonna be rare. Like that's honestly that's probably how they're doing it it's to make. Gotta, it's gotta be I mean, red, it's white, gotta blue, be. right? Red, white, blue. So I'm excited. You know, so quit complaining about your, your rare, the, oh no, it's a generic, it's a rare. There was a chase generic, all right? So just, just calm, calm down, all right? And they're super rare generic, so don't complain about a rare of all things. So AIM Blue Squad, he is AIM Avengers Hydra politician and scientist. He has one trait, no special powers, no special combat symbols, only 40 points. He has four range, one bolt, and his trait is administrative and research division leadership. If AIM Blue Squad is part of a named theme team, friendly characters with the AIM keyword, consider other friendly characters within three squares and line of fire to be adjacent while using enhancement, empower, leadership, or support. That's awesome. That is so freaking awesome. So even if he's part of an Avengers theme team, just because it says other friendly characters with the AIM keyword, or friendly characters with the AIM keyword, consider other friendly characters. That's really cool. It only really works with AIM, sadly not Avengers, but it's still really neat. So all the AIM dudes can still, you know, be awesome with each other. So it's really dope. Uh, so what does this dial look like? Four clicks long, not a lot. You got 10 points a click here. Full dial of sidestep. His first click is different than the rest of them, so we'll go into it. He has 10 attack, no attack power, 17 defense with mastermind, three damage with probability control. So he's got a little sidestep prob piece. So 
if you're going to be mad about pulling a rare, you did just pull a 40 point probability control piece that can also use leadership. And if they're aim, he can do it within three squares. So that's actually pretty awesome. All right. So don't complain too bad about this in sealed later in his dial, he changes and he has penetrating psychic blast with three clicks, maintaining that 10 attack, which is really dope. And then he has a barrier slot on his defense for three clicks. He has enhancement for two clicks and then empower for his very last click. So I think he's a really great, really cool thing. And I think it'd be really great if he's 40 points, then the red one or the white one or whatever they're going to do is 30. And then the next one is going to be 20. I think it'd be really great. Kind of shows the power ranking. Besides that, he's doing a salute. Like it's like, this is going to look so cool on the field when you have red, white, and blue aim squad and get like a couple of them, you know, keep them in like a row. Like it's going to look awesome. It is going to be very aesthetically pleasing. I'm excited to run this guy on a UA, uh, US Avengers theme team. So I love him. There's so many things about this that I love. One, I have to point this out because I'm not a better person. I was totally right. He does have the Avengers keyword. Do you remember when they first showed pictures of like Gamma and there was like a red one or a white one oh, in yeah. the background? And I was like, that's USA, US Avengers. It's going to have the Avengers keyword. So that's a thing. Uh, Skull reuse is just definitely going to be red and white in the probably common and uncommon, like you said. But also keep in mind, they're probably going to be fewer points. So I suspect that the common will probably be like 20 points. That's my guess. It'd be like a Dude, 40, I'm going to say 40, they're going to cool with sculpt reuse for sure. They're all looking the same, but they got different colors. Like, it's yeah. going to look awesome. Yeah, it'll be fine because they're so drastically different colored. So, yeah. it's like, that'll be fine. Um, but one thing I wanted to say about this particular character, if you're not playing in sealed, it is going to be so bad when you pull this. You're going to be like, oh, my God, this is such a crappy rare. Yes, I agree if you're not playing in sealed. But if you are playing in sealed and you pull this, based off of what we're seeing in the rest of the set – Dude, this guy is going to be awesome. Yeah, like, so for sure. good in sealed. So, skipping forward a little bit, the next event that we are going to be attending is going to be Origins in Columbus, Ohio, uh, at Battle Royals, and also in um, the other events. Are going to, it's going to be sealed, right? And my, yeah, yeah, yeah. my guess, I, I was talking to Mr. Clicks about this, they're probably going to be doing black panther in the Illuminati. oh i'm like 90 percent sure it's going to come out like literally a week before there's no other set you need to be using so you know? remember this right now if you end up playing sealed with this set this is a keeper piece to actually you know use don't don't pass this based off of what you see like look around the table but probably keep this because i i doubt you'll get too many pieces that are going to have probability control because i'm not oh, seeing yeah. a lot of it in the rest of the set plus that leadership like exactly like you just said holy crap so many le Avengers that are going to be in this set. That leadership is going to come in handy. Yeah, for sure, man. So, fantastic piece. That was part one of three ooh, that ooh. made me happy this week, okay? Nice. Um, part two, because they uh, did U.S. Avengers, remember what I said last episode or maybe two episodes ago was about what I really wanted them to make uh, uh, with the sunspot? I need a sunspot. This is just one more piece of evidence that we might get a sunspot with the Avengers keyword in this set. So I'm like, get, I'm starting to get my hopes up here, okay? Really getting my hopes up here. Um, now, before we move on to part three of what made me happy, I'm going to hit my figure. Uh, it's, it's not as cool, especially because there are better versions of him, but whatever. Uh, number 31, coming in at 120 points, we have Thor, Avengers, as guardian, cosmic, deity, warrior keywords, he does have flight, as most Thors do. Six range, double bull, will power. I'm sorry, not will power. Indom. Um, now they did make the good decision of not giving him pulse wave and enhancement top dial like they did back in that Avengers set. I can't remember what the set was, but I always thought that was super stupid. This one has energy explosion and, oh, okay. and enhancement instead. So I'm like, okay, all right, that's. Uh, at least there's that. So 120 points, that's just your base. But he is one of the other characters in here that has that additional add points, and you can start with a gem. Uh, for five additional points, you can give him the time gem. Um, we will go into that in a second. He has no special powers, the whole dial, but he does have a special trait. says, Legendary God of Thunder. Once per game, when Thor hits a single opposing character with a range attack, you may choose to make the damage dealt penetrating. Okay, yeah, that's not bad. Um, it kind of blows it's only one time. Yeah. However, as 
this is a really, really good call in for the Thor ID card. I'm just. Oh, saying. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I agree uh, with that. 10 speed running shot, 11 attack with energy explosion, like I said, 18 defense with the pink power, and 4 base damage with enhancement. So if you were coming swinging in for 4 penetrating damage off of a Thor ID card, yeah, that's pretty good. He has the Avengers uh, um, ability as well as him being 7 clicks long. He, like a lot of Thors, Moves from a range-based character to mid-dial, he goes into a close combat character, switches uh, switches from energy explosion to quake and empower, and he kind of just rides out the, the close combat the rest of the dial. But his defense is pretty decent, the whole dial. Um, mostly 17s, a couple 18s in there. So for 120 or 25 points, that's not that bad. Um, I am going to go ahead and hit the time gym just while we're here because it mentioned it, but it will come up again. It says modify range plus one. It is 10 points, indestructible, equip any, unequip drop, just like all of the other gems that, that we've seen so far. Uh, modify range by plus one, which makes his seven, so that's pretty pretty decent. Um, not going to work with your, your ID cards, right, because obviously you're going to have to start with him on the field if you want to take yeah. five points for the time gym. But you see where we're going with this. But here's the good part. Probability control. Yeah. For 10 points, this Pretty item dope. gives you probability control, which is dumb. <laughs> it also, just to round it out, says when this character attacks, if the attack roll is 10 or higher, just like we're seeing like on a lot of the other gems, this effect says opposing characters can't use effects to reroll attacks this turn. So it cancels out most of their probability controls and other duplicate effects that are not called probability control but how do you feel about a 10 point item that just gives probability control oh man it's awesome dude i think it's dope yeah good stuff so the thor by himself he's uh, he's okay um but that time gym man that's where it's at that's the money right there yep all right i can go ahead and take us away i'm talking about the champion he is 95 points. He can be 100 if you choose to start with the power gem enabled. He has no special combat symbols. He has zero range, and he has the power cosmic team ability. He has a trait just like his uh, his old pal, the um, collector there. So he has Elders of the Universe, Brute, Cosmic. His trait reads, I sense a greater challenge at the beginning of the game, but opponent blah, 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 blah. an opponent's force includes additional game elements. Uh, heal champion one click. Past his starting line to click number zero. Additional game moments like ID cards, equipment, special terrain, and locations. So it's not too terribly different. So his normal starting line is nine with a special speed power, 11 attack with super strength, 18 defense with impervious, and four damage with power. If you heal him up to zero, he has still a nine with that special speed power, 11 attack, super strength, 18 defense with that pink power. And four damage with nothing, which gives him seven clicks of life if he uh, starts on click zero, or six clicks if he starts on click one. What does that special speed power do? He has it for his first two clicks of his dial, or three clicks of his dial, however you uh, however you cut the cheese there. So, charge, period, when champion uses it and hits after resolutions, remove an action token from champion, or he may use close combat expert at no cost. Dumb! Dumb. This is pretty great. <laughs> Dumb. I love it a lot. <laughs> okay, so when I tweeted this out, I was like... What? Mm, what's that? What's that smell? It's, mm, it's meta. That's what this is. But why is it well, like that? That's that's pretty good. But what makes it better, Calder? Okay. The fact that it makes it better is let's uh, let's just go with a little trip. Let's see what this uh, what the power gem does, shall we? You know, he's already got an eleven four. How could he possibly hit any harder? Oh yeah. Effect modify damage value plus one. Close combat expert and range combat expert. When this character hits and the attacker rolls 10 or higher, after resolutions, deal the hit target one penetrating damage. Are you kidding me? So he can be a 13 5 when he uses close combat expert or a 12 6. Yeah, that's right, baby. He's going to hit like a truck. Now, charge is a hard power to pull off, but with all these good reducers he has, especially if your opponent has, and if it's a competitive game, they absolutely will have additional game elements. Now, they won't have this in sealed, albeit, unless, of course, they're playing with the uh, uh, equipment on the force and not force attached, I believe. But this is pretty dope. I love this. I like using uh, Close Combat Expert at no cost. That's so dope. So he's going to get up there. He's going to punch you for six. Sorry, seven already. Modified damage value plus one with the heavy object, right? Bam. That's hits seven. you there. Then he's going to hit you. Boom, seven. Hit you for another six. If you're not dead after 13 damage, I don't know what to tell you. And no, that's it's more than that. It's more. So you're right on the first attack. Oh, that that's is, right. Uh, yeah, it's four plus two for the super strength, plus one 
for the power gym. That's seven. And then the second attack is going to be four plus one from the power gym plus two oh, yeah, from the two. combat expert. So that's another seven. Fourteen damage, folks. That's, that's a lot of not, damage. That's not including if you roll ten or higher. So that's it's true. actually a possibility of sixteen damage in one turn. In one turn for a 100-point hero click. So he's only 100 points, and I, I honestly, I want to put this guy on a lot of teams. I can't wait to play sealed with him. It's going to be just so much freaking fun. I really hope that he starts with the power gem, you know, like with him. Like, it's so many characters have this whole bearer of the gems, give him the power gem. I really hope he starts with it. I mean, that'd be awesome if it was still in this booster, but, like, if you have to get lucky and just say it's, like, randomly in there, like ID cards are, and they're just sort of floating around, then it's going to be really tough to pair this up. But I really hope he uh, he begins, you know, with it attached and a little piece of tape on the side of the booster. But I love the champion. I am just really loving the Elders of the Universe right now. It's just I want to see more. I just don't understand. You will not hear me say this very often because I just don't play in the meta, but you will not hear me say this until, like, right now. This will be meta. The I just don't I don't call that out very often, but this will be because you just don't have hero clicks that deal with that amount of damage that quickly. Bull claims, Chris. Bull claims. Uh, this guy. I mean, Maxman find some way since he's already equipped, he can't equip anything else. But find some way to just throw him up and just peg people with that. I mean, if someone is dumb enough to put two hero clicks right next to each other. Seven clicks of damage to the first one should theoretically put them out of commission, and then you can alpha you can alpha strike two characters in the same turn if they're right next to each other. All right. So, and it's already equipped, so you don't even have to spend a turn actually equipping the power gem. So basically, just telekinesis him up if they are stupid enough to put them inside of a range of five square charge, or have perplex on your team and increase that charge speed. It's just this is dumb. This is like an absolutely overpowered hero click. <laughs> I'm excited to see what uh, what people do with him. That's for sure. Not to mention you can't outwit him. Oh, that's true. Yeah, the entire time you're not outwitting his defense, so he's only going to take three damage top dial. But you know, okay, yeah. small things. That's dumb. So there's <laughs> that. Um, okay, so I just talked about Thor with the time gym. Uh, we got another one. This is actually. Namor, and he has a power or a trait that works with the time gem or the power gem. So it's uh, fortuitous that we just happen to talk about those. They knew that this was coming, though. So 110 points or plus 5. So 115 points will get you 7 clicks of life, flight, and indom. And what do you get for that? You have the same trait as the hood, which is rule as the world burns. When an opposing character rolls for leadership and the result is one or two, remove an action token from Namor. All right, that's kind of cool, whatever. But he has um, a special speed power top dial with 10 speed, by the way. It says charge flurry, but only with the time gym equipped. So you'll get flurry, but also you have probability control because of that. Um, you're not going to be using the additional range. But whatever, unless I guess you probably not probability from the range, but uh, for something else like a, a off your turn or whatever. Right. Um, 11, 11 attack with super strength, 17 defense with that special with that pink power and then three base damage top dial with empower, which is not the greatest. So you you might actually end up putting the power gym on him instead just so you can get four base damage. I don't I don't really know. Um, he does have a special damage power called My Fury is as the Tempest Unleashed. Uh, that does mm. not, not occur top dial. That actually occurs on his second starting point, which is 75 points, so 80 with the trait. It says, Battle Fury. When Namor attacks with the Power Gem equipped and targets only characters with printed range values of 5 or more, modify his damage by plus 1, and the damage dealt is penetrating. Super weird. I don't... It's like a range killer for some reason, but for 80 points, you only get four clicks of life, which I don't think is that good. He starts off with a pink. Dude, he's so squishy yeah, on, he, on his low like, point dial. He's got the pink power on both uh, the 115 or the 80 point dial, but he only has 17 defense on, on both of them. That's kind yeah. of dumb. It's, now, it's pretty weak. He does have the Atlantis, Avengers, Cabal, Illuminati, Invaders, Ruler, and Warrior keywords, so that's pretty, pretty cool. nice. Yeah, I mean, like, you can get him on a lot of teams, but 
there are better Namors out there. For sure. Okay. Here we go. And I just want to say uh, a certain podcast won't name won't answer <laughs> rule of three has been complaining about my man Namor here. <laughs> all right. They're like, oh, we get too many Namors. We get one Namor. All right. Just, just chill, chill out. And I'm just saying, he was in Avengers Infinity. He was in Battle World. He was in Earth X. Now here he is again. All right. So last four Marvel sets had a Namor. You know what else they had? A Thor, a Captain America, an Iron Man. And they had more than one of those in each set. All right. We had four Captain Americas in Battle World. Or one Namor. So you can complain about a lot of stuff. Namor's a pretty cool character. He's got a big fan base, a good following. And it's been a different Namor each time, too. Like, they, they've all been completely different. So let's let's calm down with the Namor hate there, guys, because we have a lot of freaking <laughs> Iron Man, okay? Uh, yeah, they are all completely different, and they function differently, which you don't really see a lot of. Like, Iron Man functions the same a lot of the time, most of the time. But you have the, the Siege Perilous namor you have this crazy just i'm just angry namor you have the i'm on fire poison namor so they're a little bit different yeah now, okay i'm totally gonna let you talk about whichever one you want to talk about <laughs> but this is the third part of what made me happy this week i'll just oh, let out. see okay here we go I'll scrolling let... to a different different choice now uh, no i'll let you talk about it it's fine it's fine okay no we're talking about star brand then i guess <laughs> jeez Guys, I, have to. I, I just have to give WizKids this. They they did something right. Now, I'm saying this with a grain of salt because it was not 100% confirmed that they are going to finish it out. But if you remember, you recall back at one point uh, when the other 1 million, Avenger, 1 million BC Avengers were made, there were three of them in that first set that they were made in. And I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. But there were only three of them. And I was like, I want to get this. I want to collect. These are the first chase set. I want to get every single one of them. This is going to happen. And then the set, the rest of the set got spoiled. And I was like, why are there only three? Never mind. I've changed my mind. They did it, guys. I, th I think they did it. We have six of the seven now. We have six of the seven. And I'm hoping that they don't do me wrong. And they at least put the phoenix. That's the last one. Inside of the set, they haven't spoiled it yet, but I'm hoping they do. And if they do, that is all seven of the 1 million Avengers BC that is including the Con exclusive Ghost Rider Ghost Man. Rider, man. So oh, three cool. in each set and the Con exclusive Ghost Rider. I am completely okay with what they did. And if they do finish it out, and I don't think they would do me wrong, but – like that. Like, like, why would you make six of the seven? Dude, if they put Phoenix in X-Men, you're just going to be really sad. I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we don't know what the rest of the chases are. But, the, I mean, it's a good hypothesis, right, that it's going to be in there. And if it is, they did a good job, and I cannot thank WizKids enough for this. Yeah. Now, if it is not in there, I take back it. Everything I said nice so right. Every bit of it. Uh, <laughs> so all right. Be because, because Starbrand and Black Panther were released this week as previews, I was like, oh, my God, they finally did it. So I jumped onto Cool Stuff, Inc. immediately and put in Iron Fist and <clears throat> Agamotto into my cart. And I actually took the time to purchase them today. And that's nice. when I forgot to put in code dial five <laughs> at checkout. Which still works because not only three days ago, I also put in a code. So dial five still working. So go ahead, do that. Do your pre-orders. Yeah. Or, uh, or just forget like Chris. And, yeah, uh, don't forget like me. Not save don't forget money. like me. Um, so, anyway, star brand. No, no, no hold on. Hold on. Last thing. Oh, last jeez. Thing. Last thing. Uh, Odin was out of stock. Odin was out of stock and I yeah. couldn't put Odin in the cart. And I was like, no. So if there's anybody out there with an Odin that you want to get rid of, it would greatly make me happy. We can figure something out, all right? We can figure this out. So I'm done. Talk about whichever one you want. No, I'm talking about Starbrand. <laughs> I just... <laughs> Black Panther's better, but I'm going to talk about Starbrand. Uh, he has zero range, flight, no special combat symbols, power cost of two abilities, 140 points. What a beefy, beefy boy. He has three traits, no special uh, you know, powers. That's really cool. Avengers, Cosmic, and Past are his keywords. Real name is unknown. And uh, his first trait is the Star Brand chooses a new wielder when Star Brand is KO'd. After resolutions, roll a D6 for each character friendly and opposing within six squares of the last square he occupied. The character with the highest result modifies his combat values by plus one this game. Reroll highest ties until only one character has the highest result. So, 
this can be a little tricky. You might uh, you might give uh, your opponent a little bit of boost there. So you better hope your dice are hot when you roll for his trait or when he dies. If he dies, we'll get into that a little later. His second trait is before interstellar travel. Starbrand, a friendly character in three squares, can't be attacked by opposing characters using hypersonic speed. Uh, I haven't seen a ton of hypersonic speed in this set, so it's kind of iffy to see whether or not he's going to be great in sealed there's not a huge amount of hypersonic speed competitively right now, I don't think, but it's still a really cool power. Shuts down hypersonic speed, which is dope, you know, and especially in Sealed, if there's a lot more hypersonic characters, all it takes is having, like, one or two characters of hypersonic to make this power just awesome in Sealed, so that's really cool. And his third trait is kind of like what the other uh, BC Avengers had, which is Ancient Incarnation Starbrand, where another friendly character named Starbrand hits at Revolution... Blah, 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 blah. After resolutions, remove an action token from this character. So I don't know if they're going to put another star brand in this set. There are no modern star brands right now. Um, so maybe, I don't know. Uh, it was really cool. There's definitely a Black Panther in this set. So that's cool. There was a Iron Fist in the last set, and there was a Thor and also a Doctor Strange, sort of, in, uh, in Secret Wars Battle World. So, Doctor Strange, sort of. Yeah, well, he's Sheriff. Sheriff Strange. So I don't remember if that worked or not. But So they had their versions in that set, so it makes me think we're going to get a star brand in this set, just so that way they can at least work together and sealed. So what does the dial look like? Now we got all these traits out of the way. He starts with four clicks of charge, starting with a 12 speed, 12 attack with nothing, 19 defense with impervious, four damage, close combat expert. He keeps the impervious close combat expert for the first two clicks of his dial. Then, keeping charge, he goes into Quake, and that... Uh, what is that? That pink defense power. Still a four damage, though. Then his last three clicks, he has all the same powers. Flurry, steel energy, invulnerability, and probability control. So he's got some staying power. I really like him. His invulnerability is called uh, wielded by a crow magnum man. And I guess all crow magnum men were just jacked out of their mind. So that's pretty cool. You know, good on him. So, yeah, and he's got... You would, uh, think, you would think he would have the Hulk's powers by looking at him. He does dude, not. Dude, you would think. He's just... Dude, he's huge. He's he's kind of Hulk sized, honestly. He's big. Yeah. So, so no, yeah, he's a big dude. He's a tank. He's a beat stick. Not being able to be outwitted is going to be really good. But you know, fear the pen blast is pretty real, guys. The 19 defense is great, but uh, you might want to keep him a little safe. I don't I don't like the idea of him getting knocked down early in the game. You know, getting stuck with a 10 attack with flurry. And now you're not moving anywhere. Still kind of protect him. He's a lot of points, but I think he's really sweet, honestly. So you're going to have to actually play him the way that he is written in the comics. So I finally did manage to start reading the Avengers run with the 1 million BC Avengers. Yeah. And without fail, like every single fight that they get into, it's Odin first. <laughs> He's like, I'll take him on. And then he just like flies into the heart of it. And nice. then like Starbrand is always the last person in because it's <laughs> like, I don't know why. I do. <laughs> it's like he's scared. I'm not Maybe. Really sure what, I don't know, I'm man. Really sure. But, like, that Odin definitely shows that because he's definitely an Alpha Strike style figure. Like, that Odin's dope. Yeah. So, I'm, like, legit excited about this. Can you tell? Can you tell? I'm super excited, dude. I'm really excited. <laughs> Can you tell? It'd be yeah, awesome you... if you could get them all at Origins and then we can play a game. That'd be dope. All right. Dial H community. We got to make this happen. I need. I don't even know what all of them add up to yet because we don't have a Phoenix yet. But. I challenge you, Calder, to a game where I use all of the BC Avengers. Dial H community, we got to make this happen. All right, moving all on. All right, let's do it. You said that there were not too many characters, especially in the set, that that have a hypersonic speed. <laughs> so let me introduce you to Put one, in mouth. One, one of those characters. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. This just happens to be one of the ones that does. Uh, 85 points. We have the Black Panther chase. Number 72, Avengers, Wakanda, Animal, Deity, Past, Warrior. All right, true fandom status. Or uh, check. What's what's the name of the the panther, Calder? What's the name of the panther god? It's Bast, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll take it. I I always pronounce it Bast. Is it Bast? I'm not really sure, but it's a B A S T. But good on you, man. I'll I'll totally nice. give that to you. Serve it. Yeah, judges. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they say yeah. Uh, 85 points gives us hypersonic speed with eight speed. Guess what? They gave him improved movement, ignores elevated and hindering terrain. Awesome yeah. for this because, and you'll see in a second once I get to the traits, uh, he doesn't have any special powers either. He just has a bunch of traits, but we'll do the we'll do the dial first. He has 12 attack with precision strike, 19 defense, again, with Ooh, the 19 like defense, with super senses. 
He does have Indom. He does have three base damage with uh, Battle Fury. And you're like, well, well that's, that's not that much damage. Yeah, we'll get there. The first trait gives him stealth. Opposing lines of fire can't be drawn to Black Panther if he occupies printed hindering terrain. Protected, pulse waves. So he has super stealth. Super stealth, dude. It's dumb. Which is awesome. <laughs> He's so good. Well, th that's good. Not to mention he has hypersonic speed, which is dumb for a Black Panther, but I'm, I'm going to take it. Second trait. Before humans, top the food chain. Dude, he's got traded blades, claws, and fangs. So it doesn't matter that he only has three base damage. <laughs> Who cares? Opposing characters within three squares can't use blades, claws, and fangs. I don't know when that that's really going to come in handy that much, but he has traded B, uh, BCF, so that's cool. Uh, and then the last trait is the one where if you have another friendly character named Black Panther, in this case, you, you remove an action token. So the rest of the dial is... Um, kind of exactly what you would think a black panther would have charge exploit weakness he's got combat reflexes uh he's got flurry on the end he's only six clicks long but he's only 85 points so i'm he's he's so good i really really like this black panther real name Dude, unknown so we don't have a we don't have a name on that one it's which, t something probably you expect t apostrophe something insert, yeah insert additional name there so all right, well, that's our Black Panther and our Star Brand. I you know, I can't remember if you can use uh, Blades with hypersonic speed, but I know you can definitely use Precision Strike with it, so that's still really dope. Okay. Uh, dude, he's going to be hard to kill. Like, So 85 points, he's less than the 100-point Iron Man that I pretty much almost always used in a SEAL team for, uh, for Battle World, and I think he's way better. You know, for 15 points less... He gets Battle Fury. He might not get all the other random cool stuff, but I think Precision Battle Fury working together, he, you know, ignores Shape Change. He, you know, makes the roll a little less on Super Senses. Like, this is dope. In a mirror match, it's whoever gets that first hit off to really damage this guy for these. I mean, I doubt a mirror match is going to happen and seal two chases, but still, like, he's awesome. And that Super Stealth is no joke, man. It's pretty dope. Like Anytime there has been uh, an effect that gives someone Super Stealth is just so dumb. Because you can't even you can't even target him with pulse wave, right? No, you can't. Like that's um, so, so awesome. I want to thank Da Vinci's DreamWorks for half the previews, and then what was the other one? I always already forgot. Ah, oh, shoot, Eternal Games for the other half of the previews. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate All right. it. Well, yeah, no, the, thank you guys. We do appreciate that. In case uh, you listen, or in case uh, one of your followers listens, you can uh, relay that information. Our gratitude to them. That is all we have for news, though. But it is the second episode of the month, so it is time for the heroic ranking up ceremony. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have two people that are going to be ranking up this month. The first one is going to be our man in Australia, moving from vigilante to protagonist, is none other than Ben Jones. So thank you, sir. We do appreciate that. And the second person is going to be moving from protagonist all the way to superhero. Sir, that means that you're going to let us have it. Let us know. You want to be a superhero, a supervillain? What's your superhero, supervillain name going to be? That is none other than Mike Templeton. So, gentlemen, we really appreciate uh, all of what you've done for us. really keeps the podcast going, as always. And um, I do need to let everybody know, uh, I have not had a day off since last week. And because oh, I have not had geez, a day man. off since last week, uh, last episode, I have not made it to the post office to ship off dice. Uh, if you are listening to this and you have your heroic rank and you've been part of the Patreon, or if you just like given us money on PayPal, we do appreciate that too. Um, you can earn your heroic rank and you can get us dice. You can get your dice from us, but we need your address. Some of you, I have asked for your addresses so that I can send that off. But on Wednesday, that is the day that I plan on going to the post office to start getting this stuff shipped off. So. Uh, Sweet dial H for hero clicks, custom dice. You can uh, lock those in. Um, there are two people that jumped onto our Patreon since last episode. And the way Patreon works, if you don't know, is it actually starts – it takes money out at the beginning of the month. So because it hasn't done it yet, we're going to wait until next month um, as, as, soon, as soon as that goes through, basically. I'll send you guys uh, your, your stuff as well. But make sure that you give us your addresses either on Facebook – in uh, DM or on Twitter. 
uh, because we'll need those. Otherwise, we can't get them to you. All right? Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Those dice are so sweet. They're just they're just <sighs> sitting here Dude, ready I can't wait. for you to roll them to win tournaments in the name of Dial H. That's <sighs> Actually, it's for Beautiful. yourself, but you, you, you can give us a shout out too. <laughs> Jeez. All right, let's move on to the community section. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Every week on Facebook and on Twitter, we put a Community Tuesdays question up. And this week's Community Tuesdays question resulted in, I think, the most amount of answers that we've ever gotten for a Community Tuesdays question, which leads me to believe that either A, or it could be both, A, uh, we are just – we're growing as a brand, and we really appreciate that. We appreciate the love that you guys are giving us. Or B, this was like a very controversial topic that people felt like they needed to jump in on. Could be both. Not really sure. I'm saying it's a little bit of both, man. The community is getting bigger. People are loving it. And then uh, everybody's got an opinion about the WWE. Yeah, that's true. Here is the question. What are your feelings about the upcoming WWE set? Are you excited? Let down? Waiting for more information to come out? Carter, what do you think? I, I don't know. We've, we've pretty much spoiled what we think, right? 100% hype train, man. I'm already on the hype train. I'm already there, dude. Train. I'm, I'm there, man. I, I'm going to buy a lot of it. I mean, by a lot of it, I mean the specific ones I want, which is really cool. I really appreciate that part of it. I like the ring idea. I don't love the characters that come with the ring, but I'm still going to get a ring. It's going to be cool, man. That's a great way to display your WWE figures, too. Like, I think this set is through and through the best they can do with the property, trying to mix the old, the new, the attitude, the golden, the current, all that stuff. Like, they're, they're really doing their best. And just to give us a taste and make us want more. You know, because they've shown a lot of wrestlers, but everybody has that one lesser. They're like, man, they they still haven't showed off, you know, Brett, Brett Hart. Where is he, man? What's what's going on? You know, so there's all sorts of people that they still want. There's thousands of wrestlers, hundreds. There's just so many. So I think this is a, uh, a really awesome property. And hopefully WizKids, you know, they're trying new things with it. And I just think it's awesome. I really love it. I'm, I just I can't wait for more. You know, this is already not enough. I already want more. And I'm happy about that. I have only one bad thing to say. That's it. Just negative one. Nancy. Just one. Here's the negativeness. Negativity is the actual word, if I'm correcting myself. I won't be here when it comes out. Oh, that is pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is the one negative thing that I have to say. I'm genuinely – I think this is very cool that WizKids did this. And um, by the way, I don't know what exactly happened this like last week in the WWE, but we had so many people, like, so many, like, listeners on Twitter that were having, I don't want to say, like, full-blown meltdowns about the WWE, like, people saying, I've been watching WWE for 15 years, I'm finally walking away, this was the last straw, and I'm like, what happened? So I had to get a hold of my brother, my brother's like, okay, so he's a huge WWE fan, so he sent me, like, no joke, like, 25 messages in a row. Of oh geez. The WWE and what is going on, and he's like, "This is why everyone is so mad." <laughs> it was just paragraph after paragraph. So, I'm not gonna get into it. Here's what I, for those of you that are big WWE fans and currently watch, I feel bad for you. I legitimately feel bad for you for what is going on. Apparently, if, if what my brother says is accurate, but according to some of the other listeners, they're like, "Yeah, this is accurate too." So. I'm leading uh, to believe that it is true, so I feel okay, bad. Okay, I don't, I don't really know what's going on. I'm not going to lie. My Hulu, I put it on hold. I wasn't watching a lot. I was literally just watching WWE um, with it, and uh, I like Lacey Evans, honestly, a lot. I don't know if that's, like, the negativity. If not, I would love it if there was a figure of her where she had, like, shape change, like a 19 toughness, and if you would target any character, you had to target her instead. Like, I would, I would honestly really dig a Lacey Evans figure. Like, that'd be pretty dope. Yeah, I think it's a lot more than that, man. It probably is. It probably is. <laughs> Wait, why'd you get rid of Hulu? Did you know that uh, the next ten episodes of My Hero Academia came out and they were dubbed? Yeah, I watched that in a less uh, in a less um, how do you want, how do you want to say this uh, legal 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 way. <laughs> so I'm already good. I watched season three, man. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll move on to not incriminate you, incriminate you any <laughs> further. Um, we, I'll start off on Twitter. All right. Okay. So because we got like. 45 answers this week. Jillian. Like, it is ridiculous. So we are going to have to dial it back. So we are going to cover, if you have a heroic rank, we will be reading your answers, and that's mostly just for time. However, we do encourage people to jump on and <laughs> read some of these answers. Some were like, 
yeah, I'm excited. This is cool. And some were like <laughs> the most ridiculous stuff I've read in a while. But we'll start off with our newly anointed protagonist, Ben Jones, said, I'm in for it. It will be costly, but I know I will play it for home games a lot. The starter looks great. I think you and I both agreed that this oh, yeah, for sure. did look really great. Um, and just so everybody knows, because I think there was a misconception, the MSRP for individual quote-unquote expansion packs, a.k.a. one-figure boosters, are $8, not 6 I think I heard that somewhere. $8. Yeah, 30 bucks. Seven ninety nine, folks. Seven ninety nine. Yep. All right. Uh, my first is super fan, Eric Cave, says he personally don't care about WWE, but I do feel bad for the rest of you getting absolutely price gouged. I mean, eight bucks ain't price gouged. I've wanted the boxing arena for the sake of thematic games, but its viability for competitive play has made it unreasonable to acquire, much like how I feel about the Blackbird. Hopefully, WWE ring is not as busted so more people can enjoy the concept. Boxing arena was only about I think 30 bucks a while ago on cool stuff. It might be more now. I know it is more on the secondary market. Uh, but if you want a Blackbird, I bought mine just for IDs. So Eric, uh, message me. Gina, you get a Blackbird at a reasonable price, whatever you, whatever you think that is. I think, uh, it's about 60 bucks with IDs. Maybe like, like 20 or 30 with that. So yeah, not, uh, not super, uh, not super excited. All right. We have, uh, super fan. Superhero, the ruffian, little plastic superheroes who said, in my opinion, Anything out of the comic book slash superhero genre shouldn't be made. The game is called Hero Clicks. Not really excited or let down, just indifferent about it. I don't think Star Trek or Orville should have been made either and was initially on the fence about TMNT. All right, sir, I respect your opinion. Of course, you are uh, a super fan. I will respect that. However, I do – I have to disagree, man. Um, if – Watching My Hero Academia has taught me anything. <laughs> this is where I get my life lessons from anime, just to let you know. Uh, being a hero is not about having superpowers. It's about your character. So I don't think you need to be flying around in a cape to be a hero. Uh, no cape! And, and also, just if we're going to be, just be completely technical, if it is hero clicks and they should have never made my favorite claw because he's a villain and they never made villain clicks exactly boom roasted got him uh, did, <laughs> he say say no got him. <laughs> did he say no tmnt in that lineup he said yeah he said well he said he was initially on the fence about TMNT. there's shows in a half shell dude i it's in so, their tagline yeah i mean uh, i mean i'll I agree was, with star trek and orville just because i don't like star trek but uh orville is awesome you hush your mouth <laughs> And also, it just got renewed for a third season, which it totally uh, hey, deserves. Hey. Shut up. You go. <laughs> okay. Uh, Citizen Jeff Boyer, WDB isn't one of my f personal fandoms, but I'm happy for those who are excited. The rumor that it won't be modern seems unlikely to me. Surely WizKids has learned their lesson about re releasing new material that aren't playable in tournaments. Presuming it is modern and legal, I'll likely buy starter materials, but I certainly won't be buying any individual figures. Now, if they had some luchadors like El Santo, Blue Devil, and Mila, uh, I'm gonna butcher this, Mascaras, then I'd snap those up in an instant. I don't, I don't honestly like the lucha wrestlers. Uh, Rey Mysterio is like pretty cool, but I really do not like lucha, lucha wrestlers that much. I Dude, I love Rey Mysterio. I think we're the same height. That's not a joke. <laughs> so, is he that short? Is he that incredible? Shut up! <laughs> small. Oh, man, sad face. Yeah, he yeah, actually, I'm pretty sure he is. Oh, look it up. What, what is that like? Is that 5'2", something like that? Shut, I am not that <laughs> short, dude. <laughs> Shut up. I'll look it up uh, on the next. When you read your next answer, once I get through mine, okay. I will look it up. We'll figure this out. All right. Uh, we have an answer from Vigilante, Vigilante Collectible. He said, I'm waiting for more information. Uh, supposedly these are modern legal, but I'll wait for official confirmation. I also want to see what keywords they give out. Hopefully they offer tag team specific keywords and not something generic. Example, Andre the Giant has mega bucks. Uh, Triple H go. should have tons of keywords. Degeneration X, Evolution, and so on. But I fear he may just get uh, Mick McMahon, Helmsley faction, and that's it. Uh, excited again with the confirmation, the confirmation WWE are modern. Okay, so he was updating his post basically. Uh, the confirmation of WWE are modern age now to see if we can pre-order specific expansion packs. Um, okay, so totally, I think this is the 
the right way to go, honestly, is just wait a little bit longer for more information to go out. Uh, once you get past the initial uh, emotional reaction of like whether you hate it or whether you love it, uh, it probably the more uh, the the better way to do it is just just dial it back a little bit, wait for it. But yeah, I, I am kind of curious on what they're gonna do with keywords because I hadn't even thought about that until you brought that up in this post. So thank you for that. Um, it could go. Anyway, like, is is NWO gonna be a keyword? Are oh, they gonna that'd be bring awesome? Like, oh. are they gonna do keywords from ju- like just what existed in the WWE, or are they gonna do keywords that existed back when there was a split and there was like the WWF and then there was also the WCW? Is that a thing? Like, I, I'd fanboy pretty hard if they did that. I'd be, I'd be pretty awesome, not gonna lie. Like, I don't know how this is going to work. No one does, so it's probably more prudent to it's just up in the air, man. We haven't got yeah, a well, single preview yet besides Sculpt, so right. we don't know. That's that. I'm going to look up and see how tall Rey Mysterio is. I am. I'm kind of – I'm not going to lie. I'm out of um, hero rank people, so I'm just going to go do some random answers. Simeon Bruce says he's happy to be getting more properties. Extremely excited for the Attitude Era and older stuff. Uh, I feel really bad for all the people who didn't get to watch it back then. I also hope – a few of them are absolutely busted, so all the competitive players are forced to buy and play them. What a guy. What an attitude to have. All right, I did find it. Rey Mysterio is, in fact, five foot six. We're so short. Which means we're the same height. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I've heard it my whole life. I don't care. It's okay, um, man. It's pretty awesome, though. It's actually pretty cool, especially if you like the wrestler. I do. I actually liked Rey Mysterio now. I didn't identify with him because he was... <laughs> the same height as me i just thought he was like he's an exceptional athlete the way he jumps around he's honestly really good he is really good uh, it was it was pretty insane and because he was like so nimble and and dexterous he could do all these kind of things in the ring that these big guys like like the big show and kevin nash and stuff like they could never do but Rey mysterio could do it and plus man that guy's fearless he would jump off of anything and I'm not gonna lie. There's there's some of the things I watch that man jump off of. I would never jump off of. I'm like, that's insane. Don't do that. And he did it. So, so all right, good on him. Uh, I think I'm actually out on the community Tuesday's question for heroic ranks as well. But, oh, all right, man. Uh, once again, guys, man, this was insane. Seeing how many people jumped in with all of this, it was really cool. And honestly, if you're curious about a lot of the um, crazy like diversity in all these answers, go check them out on Facebook and Twitter because there's a lot of really good ones in here that we just don't have time to get to. True, true. All right, we have, uh, let's see, we have a Malcolm Rush question block. We also have, let's start off with this, actually. We got a random question from, where are you? This is on Twitter. This is from Elac Megacon 2019 uh said here's a weird question hypothetical but figured i'd toss it out anyway by the way guys we don't it doesn't matter to us if you have questions it does not even have to be hero clicks related just send them in we'll you know you you yes i do like mayonnaise on my hot dog (laughs) we will we'll just shoot the crap with you guys no matter what it doesn't absolutely uh say you wanted to build a force cube and in parentheses he explained what that is in case anybody out there does not know that is a pre-selected set of figures from your collection to play sealed games battle royales with uh where would you start i figure that having a separate pool for dc marvel would help so keywords would be easier for theme teams but perhaps having both in the same cube could be fun too do you want to field this first yeah sure is it like a point total that he's like saying like it's got to be 300 or something or he he didn't specify that it needed to be 300 but i think what he what he's like the the heart of the question is what would you do if you had to have pre-selected teams um I, I think that's probably the first place I would start is see what the, the point total is. Yeah. But what do you what do you think? Uh, for sure. Honestly, it'd probably be a lot of 75 to 150 point characters, uh, mostly shifting focus. Like uh, shifting focus, Captain America's are pretty much on there for my Marvel team. Um, and depending on what I do, maybe I just want to have a crazy huge battle royale starting area. And I want to have a million giant girls on my team, you know, so stuff like that, like point filler. Of course I put, uh, you know, just be biased old man cap me on the team too. A little bit of support is always great. So, um, yeah, for Marvel, it would really be Avengers themed, like more or less for sure. Uh, that there's a million good Thors. Thunderstrike would be great on a force build since he's 115 points. of just straight, you know, beast, beastness. Um, and Earth X Force Cube would actually be really dope. I bet I could probably like whip one together right now. Honestly, Chris, you want to answer 
sort of your yeah, side? Well, I think you and I took it actually a little bit differently because when well, this is the beauty or downfall of the English language, he said, where would you start? Now that could be read as like, where would you start? Like you as a collective, you in general, or where would you start personally? Now you went with like the very personal route. Um, I, I'm, I'll go the very generic route and not like build a team or anything, but I would say that there's basically two ways to do this. You can either a work solely off of keywords, right? You like make a list and and I've met people and I've seen these before where people will have pre-made teams that are written in notebooks and they may like be dispersed throughout their collection in their house or whatever because I've seen people's collections be like, oh, this is my uh, this is my battle world. Uh, tackle box, this is my Earth X tackle box, this is my Rebirth tackle box, whatever, but the, you'd have the pre-made team written out for you know exactly what to pull from each of those tackle boxes. So you could do it certainly through just keyword, make your team. Um, it could just be funsies or like a round of like a com- uh, comic theme. Like, oh, I read this issue and it has Cap, Iron Man, and Thor, and I made a 300-point team off those, and I'll write this in a notebook somewhere, and then you're ready to go. So Anytime someone's like, hey, you want to play a 300-point game? You'd be like, bam, let me throw up in my notebook, scroll to this, bam, got it, and then just go grab your pieces. Uh, the other way you can do it is just work off of, like, little gimmicky things that you can do, like little combos, um, which we haven't done uh, a uh, – uh, not a casual comparison. Man, I forgot the name of our own segments there. Well, what a what a profession. Oh, dude. <laughs> uh, but we, we named them as Fool's Gold uh, as far as, like, the combos – uh, of just like a hidden gem, do. Chris. Thank your you. Your segments. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, I know it's my. Wow. <laughs> it's my segment. Um, that way you can write down like the little gimmick so you don't forget what it is. Of like this character plus this character equals this, like uh, massive damage, or you can, I mean, generic terms or whatever it is, and then just write it down, and then you always have like a go-to for different point values. I know I have met people that legitimately have never even played with the teams that they have written out. They just like building teams. And they will build teams on paper, and they'll just save them. And then yeah. later on, they'll be like, oh, I forgot I made this. Maybe might go back one of these days and play it. So that's probably the two different ways I would go about making them. You okay. have a team for us? Oh, yeah, dude, I totally do. So it would be EarthX Captain America, uh, EarthX the 30-point Spider-Man. Then it would be blah, 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 EarthX Namor. Uh, full points, and then it would be Daredevil at 60 points. That that makes us a nice, even 300 points. That has loads of synergy. So that would be my, like, pretty, that'd pretty much be my Marvel team. For DC, I'd throw something, like, super easy. I'd do, like, Lex Luthor, God of Apocalypse, and Ha 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 Joker, honestly. Like, that's what it would just be for DC. So, yeah, okay. there we go, man. All right, man, I hope that answered your question. I uh, I had told him on Twitter I'd answer it this next episode. So hopefully uh, right, you got some enjoyment out of that. All right, we can move on to, I think we have a Malcolm Rush. Yeah, question block. Here we go. All right, Calder has a list of questions from Malcolm, but I should say that, Malcolm, this might be the very first time, maybe, that I ever sat down and, I mean, I took – I put some work into this, okay, some actual work because – there's only about 15,000 pieces that have been made in the game of Heroclix, so this is a little difficult. Okay, okay, all right, sure, Chris, all right, okay, okay, sure, Chris, all right, all right, sure, okay. Anyways, over the years, WizKids has made many different kinds of hero poses into Heroclix sculptures, and many Heroclix sculptures share blah, 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 a certain type of pose. Please give the best and worst your favorite of these different kinds of poses in Heroclix only judge the sculptures, not the dials. This is 12, 12 figures here, guys. And number one is a superhero landing pose, Chris. This is almost like an interactive experience for once with you guys, so I do encourage you, pull up HC Realms. You might need it for this because some of you definitely were not playing during the time that these came out, so you didn't even know they were a thing. You will you will appreciate this if you look at them as we go through them. The best superhero landing pose that I took was um, there was a unique Hulk. I believe it was from the Avengers set. The original Avengers set is the Ultimate Universe Hulk, and he is he had clearly just 
had landed from the bounding that the Hulk does. He landed and he was he was jumping off again and like he was leaving destruction in his wake as he was jumping off again. I always thought that was a sweet sculpt. So I, I it immediately came to mind. Nice. Uh, mine's got to be Iron Man from 001 Iron Man slash 001B Silver Centurion from the Invincible Iron Man set, where he's kind of going in for a landing with his little jet boots. I always just kind of dug that sculpt. I don't know why. I think it's pretty oh, neat. Oh, like a, like a nice, soft landing. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was yeah. a cool one, too. To get a worst. To get a worst sculpt. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I happen to love this keyword, the authority, but this Ooh. piece was garbage like the sculpt was garbage and that is jack hawksmore i don't know exactly what is going on it came out in the flash set if you're following along uh, i don't know what was going on in their minds when they were making that piece uh but it just looks like he's squatting like he's getting ready to take a dump um he could be getting ready to jump or he could be landing so i'm gonna take it as a landing pose and i'm like this is one of the only pieces I've legitimately ever wanted to mod because Jack Hawksmore is awesome in the comics. And I want to get like a piece of like a, a city block or a cityscape or something. There's been plenty of pieces over the years that have like, like buildings on it. Mount that on there and then just glue that Jack Hawksmore on top of a building. There you go. That makes more sense. Yeah. Um, mine would kind of be, there was a Wolverine in Chaos War, and he was, like, sort of doing a superhero, like, kneeling pose, but he really looks like he was, like, you know, bending over to pick something up off the ground, honestly, so I didn't really care for that, that one, that much. Uh, number two is a sitting pose. Ooh. All right, from the Harley Quinn set, we have Batman God of Knowledge. Ooh, nice. That thing is so sweet looking. Uh, as soon as I saw that, I was like, man, that is a good, good sculpt. So I think, and I, I'm pretty sure that's pulled directly from the comics so that it adds an additional level of my appreciation yeah, to it. Yeah, for so, sure. Good job. Uh, my favorite is from the Flash set, and it is Harley Quinn. She's not sitting, but uh, good old Jake Williams, Jittery, is sitting with Harley Quinn by him. So I always dug that sitting sculpt, and it makes people kind of mad, so I like it a lot. Mm. Yeah, actually, if... You are new to Dial H for Heroclix. We did do an interview with uh, that creator of that. Um, Good old so Jake Williams, man. And, yeah, with, yeah, with him. So you can go back and you can listen to that episode of that interview. That might be fun for you. Next one. Oh, wait. No, mine. The worst. Mine. The worst. Favorite. Okay. There was a set that came out a long, long time ago. Now, I understand the sculpts have actually gotten a lot better since then, but even back then, this was like, what? Go back to the Justice League set. Look at the character named... Hector Hammond. It is. I don't even know what was going on there, but holy crap, they should have never made that. <laughs> Are you trying to look it up right does now? Does he? Does he have a big head? Is that what I'm trying yes. to think of? Yeah, he's terrifying, dude. It was like, what? I don't even know what was going on. It, like, I don't know if I could ever. Even if that piece were really good, I still couldn't play with it because it's so ugly. You know what? Good thing he's not good. He's terrible. So you're you're safe. Uh, my least favorite is um is a character who has a chair and he's not sitting in it. It's Black Panther from the Captain America set. He's got his he's like got one leg on the ground and then one leg in the chair. He's not just sitting in the chair. I don't like it. I don't like it. Black Panther's not what you do to chairs. Get your feet off the chair, dude. What are you doing, T'Challa? Come on, man. Next up, riding pose, animal or a vehicle, Chris. All right, the best one, and I think I'm just riding this hype train right now, so this might change later, but I'm super excited for that 1 million BC Ghost Rider Mammoth. Oh, yeah. Uh, that thing looks so sweet. I'm genuinely excited about it. My favorite riding pose is going to be a duo figure, Howard the Duck and Man Thing. I like Howard. He's riding on top of Man oh, Thing. It's so cute. Yeah, he is. He's just kind of up there. I really like it a lot, so that's got to be my God. favorite. I forgot about that piece. That's a good answer. Dude, I love it. All right. Least we... favorite. Ugh, okay. You know I'm a big Avengers fan, oh, but man. I got to call a spade a spade. You go back to the Avengers set. Two-Gun Kid. Oh, man. I don't know what he is Harsh. riding exactly, but that thing is stupid looking. Uh, the rest of the sculpt is actually not bad at all. Uh, he's got the sweet cowboy hat. He's holding a gun off to his side, but that round ball thing that he's riding – I never even understood that. They could have, like, he's a cowboy. He could have been riding, like, a mechanized stallion or something. But, no, they gave him this stupid ball in the comics. And I I get it. They were just going off the comics. But 
whatever. I just hate it. I really, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not their fault. Who knows? Uh, my least favorite is Johnny Thunder. He's like riding some lightning. He looks dumb. He looks stupid. That's why. Johnny Thunder from Joker's Wild. Not Joker's Wild. No, yeah, Joker's Wild. He looks like an idiot. Stupid riding sculpt. So, yeah, <laughs> Johnny Thunder. Uh, next up, standing around pose. Just waiting. A waiting pose. Okay, so I took this as he's just waiting because he's not really doing anything else. But if you go back to the Sinister set, uh, is by far, probably, in my opinion, the coolest Daredevil pose ever but also probably one of the coolest poses ever. It's the one where there is a cross. This is actually ripped from, I think it's the, the Millar run on Miller or Millar? Probably Miller, I would say. Uh, no, it's, that's actually two different writers. Oh, um, never mind. I, th I think it might be Millar. Uh, but it's ripped from there where he's like hanging onto a cross and then just hanging off of the cross. And obviously it's supposed to be on top of a church like it right, is in the comics. Yeah. But it's, like, obviously just the cross. But it's so cool to me. I don't know why. I just always loved that. When it came out, I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. So I always liked that pose a lot. Um, So mine is going to be – it's kind of two. Honestly, I couldn't decide. Uh, the first one is Hammer of Thor, Captain America. And he's just kind of – he's just kind of standing there. He's got the dust settling, you know, below his feet. So that's great. Uh, you know, Smoky Foot Cap, he's always awesome. Uh, and then Captain Iron America, because he's also just kind of standing there, but more, uh, more, you know, awesomely, because he's also holding the American flag over a pile of rubble, which is really dope. So um, for least favorite, I mean, there's so many. There are so many bad standing around poses. That's why it's uh, one of the least favorite poses. So go buy uh, any new set and just choose choose one. <laughs> there you go so, so for my particular one that i did choose because i was like man i love this daredevil so much let me type in daredevil into hc realms and just go through the other daredevils to see what other cool stuff there was and i accidentally remembered that they made the the what if daredevil with the like baton that's extending from his arm now if you look at the digital rendering of it it actually doesn't look that bad however if you Look at a real one in real life. It does not look like the digital rendering, which is why I chose it, because it's so garbage. It just looks like he has an extended arm. Yeah. It's like two arms long. And I was like, I see what they were going for, but they failed miserably. So that's probably the worst. And then also this one won an award for the Dial H uh, Hero Clicks Awards ceremony. I think it was last year, maybe two years ago. Yeah. Superior Foes Mr. Hyde. Is oh, yeah, he was bad. Worst made sculpts ever just go look at it you'll understand all right nice uh next up is a uh, flying pose moving What's, go uh... to the set mutant mayhem and i think that this is the only time they have ever done this in the history of hero clicks this is why i chose it not because of this like the stance itself is super cool but because of what they did with the paint nova it is a metallic silver, and it actually is reflective. If you look at it on HC Realms, you can't tell because it's a picture. But in real life, and I have one right next to me, it does gleam, and it is super cool. You just, like, hold it up to the light, especially, like, a nice, like, sunlight. It just, like, sparkles off of it. I'm like, man, that is so cool what they did with this. Uh, probably my favorite flying pose is going to be something from the Age of Ultron set and that's going to be the avengers quinjet taken off i really like it i like it a lot it's probably one of my favorite uh figures that i have displayed for sure yeah um, yeah, yeah that's, that's a really good one least favorite flying pose chris go to the set origin and it is going to be alan scott i don't know why they hate. made him as derpy as they made him look but i mean this is in the history of hero clicks the definition of derp so just Keep going. Just bypass that. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of... Uh, let's just go every character to the flight stand. Or almost every character to the flight stand. Pretty bad. Uh, How dare stand. you? I know you just said a character to the flight stand. <laughs> I feel pretty bad about that. But, like, that was... Well, no, he was bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, next up is a hovering pose, not moving. All right. When this figure came out, it seriously brought fear to a lot of players. Like, if you sat down across from this... Not only was the pose amazing, the sculpt was great, but the power level, I know we're not supposed to go into the dials or anything, was just dumb. Original KC Superman. 
that became in my head, and I don't know why, but the definitive Superman stance of just Superman. I'm like, anytime I think of Superman, it's just him hovering down with the cape flowing behind him, and knowing how much power was behind that hero click has just ingrained it as like one of the coolest poses ever. So I, I'm not really a huge Superman fan, but that hero click is awesome. We like, we almost doubled up. We were really close, but not quite. Uh, my favorite. Hovering pose is going to be from the AVX set. It's Thor. Uh, he's just kind of hovering up in the air, swinging his hammer. He looks really dope. So I always really dug that Thor sculpt. Um, Chris, least favorite hovering pose. Dr. Manhattan. Oh, man. From the Watchmen set, the one where he's doing, like, Indian-style sitting. But he's, like, they, the way they made him hover is by attaching him to that cog thing that's behind him. I wanted that to be – like in theory, that sounds cool, but then in, in actuality it ended up just being kind of dumb looking, so I never liked that sculpt. There are a few people that have like the cross leg hovering. There's like a moon dragon, I think, like an ancient one, stuff like that. Of that, I kind of want to play a whole team of just like people like that. Same Dr. Sculpt. Druid. Dr. Also, Druid, yeah. It was like that, yeah, and that one's really dumb too. I just don't think it's, it's as dumb as the Dr. Manhattan one. Uh, my least favorite hovering pose is – KC Superman from the world's finest set. Uh, cause screw Superman. He sucks. Uh, that's all. <laughs> Next up. Oh boy. <laughs> running pose. Best. One of my top five favorite sculpts of all time, probably. Maybe top three. AOU Black Panther. Oh yeah. That's pretty that awesome. That shadow effect that he's got going on is amazing. So I was thinking about that shadow effect that they did, and it reminded me that there were other ones that are out there. And then it reminded me of this, so it was kind of a tie in my head. Casey Flash from the Flash set does the exact same thing, and I thought that was beautiful as well. So both of those are, like, top tier for me. Uh, my running pose is a more recent figure. It's going to be uh, Maestro, Maestro from the Mighty Thor set. He's just like, he's running full bore. He's, his, uh, what's left of it anyway, his hair is flowing. He's got one leg on the ground, the other leg kicked back. I mean, he's just looking like he's running as fast as he can at Claria. And I really like that sculpt. Uh, a least favorite running pose, Chris. From the Uncanny X-Men set, Super Saber mm. is just, not yeah, that's cool. pretty bad. Like, not only is his outfit just not cool, because you can just hands down look at certain characters, not hero clicks related, but like just characters and comics, and be like, "Wow, what a horrible outfit!" And then they take that stupid outfit, transfer it over to hero clicks, and then don't give any kind of effect to it. It just looks like some dude that's like squatting over, like he's barfing, and that's <laughs> what he looks like to me. So I'm like, I know he's supposed to be running because his powers are super speed. This still looks horrible. Uh, probably my least favorite. Running sculpt is going to be, I'd say, either Quicksilver from the first Avengers set, the first carded Avengers set. They look bad, they look really bad. Which Just one don't was like that them. One? Uh, there's one where he's wearing all silver. That was the Ultimates one, and he had yeah. one leg on the ground, one leg really kicked up, and he looked like he was about to tip over and fall forward on his face. And the other one, he was just kind of scuttling along. He didn't really have his legs that far apart when he was running, and he was just kind of like. Really, really Is that close. The one with, like the little puff of smoke or something. Yeah, yeah, he might be stopping in that one, actually. I don't know. But, That's uh, stupid. Yeah, that was yeah. dumb. So that was a pretty bad looking one. Using a weapon pose. I have two because I couldn't decide. One is from the Ultimates set, is the Punisher. It is oh, sweet. Nice. It looks like the Matrix, but made into a hero click form. You've got Frank Castle jumping sideways, dual pistols, I think they're pistols. And the only thing that's holding him up is, like, the base of the trench coat. I always thought that looked super sweet. Uh, the other one is from the BPRD action set. It's Hellboy with, in one hand, he's got his revolver. And in the other hand, he's got this freaking sweet-looking sword. Like, it doesn't matter which hand he's going to kill you with. I always thought that was a sweet, sweet nice. sculpt. So. Nice. Uh, I'm also tied between two. The first one is from the Captain America set. It's the chase, the captain, where he's picking up Thor's hammer, and he's, like, arching backwards, and lightning is coming up from his feet. It looks really, really dope. Second one is from the same set, and that's when uh, it's the peanut cap, where he's bouncing it off a wall. Just a really cool uh, shield effect. I really I always dug him bouncing it off the wall like that, so that was a really great one. You got a least favorite weapon pose, Chris? 
I do in that she can't use the weapon, so I figured this was probably a good answer. Tiger Lily from the indie set. Two Uzis, zero range. Oh, man. Uh, mine is along the same lines, actually. It's red, the zombie Red Skull uh, from Guardians of the Galaxy. Zero range, and he is he's you know lunging at you with a pistol in his hand. So, yeah. Good stuff. Not too smart. Uh, next up, using their powers... Ooh, ah. 10th anniversary Magneto with the removable bubble. Oh man, that's a good one. Awesome looking. Also from that set was the uh, Phoenix. Also looking cool, but man, that Magneto takes the cake. That was so cool. Uh, mine has to be... Which one did I have? Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, Avengers Prime. Um, I really couldn't decide, so I had to go with a few different ones. Uh, Thor, he's calling upon the lightning, so he's got the lightning going over on top of everybody. And then Iron Man is shooting out from the heart arc, arc reactor. Caps, you know, he's just kind of getting a battle stance. But that's a really cool um, everybody using their powers pose, and I really I really dig that a lot. So, yeah, Avengers Prime for that's sure. Do you have the least favorite using their powers pose? Yep, Guardians of the Galaxy set, Triton. Dumbest looking thing I've ever seen. That's fair. That's fair. Just do water guy. Uh, I've got another KC figure uh, for a least favorite sculpt, and that's going to be Green Lantern. He's using his powers to make a chair like a loser. What a loser. Oh, but that was, that was taken from the comics. Yeah, I don't though. care. He's a loser. <laughs> He's so good. And both uh, of them are so good, too. Loser. Whatever. Anyways, uh, action pose. Here we go. Favorite action. Best action pose. Harley Quinn set Man Bat. I thought was so cool, man. I'm pretty sure that won an award uh, on the podcast before for best sculpt, maybe. Uh, yeah. Like a year before we took over the podcast. So, uh, yeah, it's so good. Um, I, I, I got two for this one because I honestly couldn't choose. One's a more serious one. It's from the Civil War set. It's uh, Captain America and Iron Man. And the action pose is Cap blocking Tony's repulsor blast. You put them together. It's a really sweet sculpt because it's from a very specific iconic moment in comics. So it's a great action pose. Uh, second is another action. Um, well, of course, that's the whatever. But it's Dr. Bong. He's hitting his little <laughs> stupid fist against his head, making a big bong. bong. Like, that's a great action pose. He's just smashing his head, making the noise. So I really dug that. Um, you know what? I, those kind of hero clicks where it has, like, onomatopoeias above yeah. their heads and stuff like that. Why have they never made a Namor with Imperious Dude, Rex? You need it. Oh, so bad. That'd be dope. Head. They've made they've made five thousand Namors. Yes, they have, and and the next one's gonna be different too. It's gonna have Imperious Rex right above it. Let's neck. do it. Um, that'd be awesome. Uh, worst worst is going to be not an action pose whatsoever because it's an inanimate object, and that is from the Bioshock set, Shock Jockey. If you play the game, Shock Jockey is. You ingest it. You walk up to it and, like, ingest it or Weird. maybe inject it into okay. your veins or something. like. It's not a character, but they made it into a character. Like, it's a thing and can make its own actions and decisions. Mm. It's not. That is the dumbest thing I've probably ever seen. That's like if they made a chair into a hero click. It was, like, four clicks long life. Like, why would you do that? Dude, for any Contest of Champion player, players out there who might know, we need a chair hero click so bad. So bad. <laughs> Did I accidentally stumble onto something? You you there? you honestly kind of did. Not gonna lie. All They're right. doing yeah. I'll so I'll tell you later. For cost champions players though, they'll know what I'm talking about. We need that chair hero click. Um, my favorite. No, we already did action pose. What am I talking about? Uh, we're done. We're oh no, my least favorite. My least favorite action pose. I forgot my least favorite. Oh man, I'm so terrible. Uh, it's gonna be another Captain America, and he's gonna be one of the few caps that is gonna be on least favorite. But it's the Avengers Assemble slash Quick Start Kit Captain America, but the shield is flying towards his hand or sh and it looks like there's a laser beam yeah, shooting like out of the other side out of the shield it's really weird i mean it's an action pose sure but it, it's it's you got to look at it right and kind of have a mindset going into it before you're like all right capsa she goes to shoot lasers i guess which is so weird because at that around that time period right they, that's when they came out with the trinity for dc and then you had batman superman yep. wonder woman that all had traits that worked with each other and they were all really good and then at the same time, in Marvel, you had Thor, Cap, Iron Man, and with the sculpts, as far as the sculpts go, 
the captain, the Thor one, pretty cool. Yeah, you have sure. like Thor striking the ground with the hammer. That looks sweet. And then Iron Man was the only time we've ever gotten the gold and black armor, which was awesome. And then you have that Captain America that made no That's sense. So like, weird. You knew what it was they were going for, but it just didn't pan out the way that they had anticipated. So yeah. I agree with you wholeheartedly. We we still have two more uh, categories: the Dude, fighting pose. Two more fighting pose. Here we go. Uh, the best one that I chose, because he did break it down into one martial art type of pose, one non-martial arts type of pose. So it's really four characters total for each of us. My best martial artist pose is going to be, be from the Deadpool set, and that is the Shang-Chi. And the reason why is just because it's so simple. And they didn't add a bunch of like translucent plastic, which I normally like. I totally do. But... For once, it was just, like, him jumping up in the air with, a, like, a drop kick going yep. on, and I liked it a lot. I always did. We, we, uh, we're getting so close and yet so far away on doubling up on our answers. <laughs> we still haven't, like, doubled up yet. I'm surprised, but uh, mine is going to be Batrock, both of them. Batrock, c'est les pères, because uh, he's both doing the same jumping up in the air, doing a kick, so I like both of those Batrock poses um, yeah. for my martial arts type pose. The worst martial arts type pose is going to go back to the indie set. I thought this was stupid as soon as it came out, and I will always think it's stupid. Judge Hershey. She is doing some kind of hand plant off the ground sidekick, and it does not transfer to hero clicks very well at all. Like that's what she was supposed to be doing, but it just looks dumb. So go go look at that. You'll understand. I can't really do it justice on a podcast. Um, my least favorite martial arts pose is Iron Fist doing a kick, and um, it's just dumb because his name is Iron Fist, and he's kicking ADW Iron Fist. Negative points for me, bud. <laughs> negative, negative points. Okay, uh, the fighting pose for a non-martial artist type I thought was legitimately cool. The second I saw it, go to the Halo set. It's actually the duo click from the Halo set. Uh, Master Chief and the Arbiter. Ooh, okay. I thought that was so freaking cool. They're like back to back, ready to like, maybe they're all surrounded and stuff, and they're getting ready to just, you know, like, uh, you could go like last stand type thing. Like oh, yeah, heck yeah, man. But with, with Arbiter and Master Chief, I thought that was really cool. Um, I heard non-martial arts type pose. You could call this martial arts, I guess, in a way, but it's going to be Muhammad Ali. Uh, boxing. So I think that's a really cool uh, fighting pose. He's getting ready to throw out a wicked right hook while he's kind of protecting himself with the other hand. So I really enjoy that uh, that fight pose. Yeah. Is that a least favorite? I do. <sighs> Man. Fear itself, speedball. He looks pretty, yeah, I'll agree with that. One that's pretty bad. One of the most terrible sculpts ever made. I don't understand what he's supposed to be. It kind of looks dirty in a way, right? Because he's, like, lunging at you with his pelvis. Man, yeah, it's going bit. forward pretty, uh... <clears throat> I'm like, it's what? Just what? Speedball. I don't know what they were aiming for, even, in that particular pose. And also, speedball should just be penance forever. Is that just me? He should, that he should that? be, uh, yeah, not an idiot and just be his cooler version. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. All right. um, my least favorite is, yeah, Iron Fist is going to take up two slots, poor guy. <laughs> um, but it's going to be Secret Invasion Iron Fist, because uh, he's got nothing going on. He's just sort of like in a, in a little, little little battle stance, I oh, guess. Oh, he's just standing there. But he looks lame. He looks super lame. So he looks really thin, too. He does look really thin. He's very narrow. It looks very weird. Um, and then, yeah, do you have any hero whose poses you like that, he, that I didn't mention? So I, I chose two pieces that one you just mentioned a few minutes ago. I kind of want to piggyback on that uh, just because I thought they were just so amazing. Uh, one is Avengers Prime. I just oh, really nice. love that piece. As soon as I saw it was a thing, I, I had to get it. I, I didn't get it right when it came out, but it, I was like, this is on my list. And it took a while to get it, but I knew I had to, and I eventually did, and I was just so happy to have it. The other one – Though I never owned it, never planned on getting it, I just always just I thought it was so freaking cool. The Caped Crusader from the Batman set mm, is just right. like one of the most iconic looking Batman figures I've just probably ever seen. It's amazing. Okay, sweet. Uh, for sure, my favorite one they uh, didn't mention is Captain America from the 10th anniversary set, and that is where he's jumping over a pile of sandbags in a trench. He's got like a backpack. He's got the uh, the A. Uh, World War II helmet on. He's got a gun in one of his hands, shield in the other. I think it's a really, it's, it's honestly probably one of my favorite sculpts like ever. I really love it a lot. And he's jumping over the sandbags. It's just a really great pose. It's really um, inspiring. It's just awesome. 
for sure. What was that one hero click that was Venom jumping over something? Uh, Venom, so yeah, exclusive? it's the Flash Thompson Venom, where he's using yeah. the symbiote to jump over sandbags as well. And that's also a really cool pose. He's got like a, a rifle in the other hand, too. It's really sick. I think we're on to something. Any pose where they're jumping over sandbags is automatically a winner. It's great, dude. It's definitely, for sure, man. <laughs> uh, he actually, I forgot to send Chris this because it was part of a separate message, um, but he said carrying pose. And carrying this is pose? so weird. Okay, we're, one of the, I'll, I'll go with the worst carrying okay. pose. This is, might be controversial out there. I want to see that if we agree. Star, that star girl where, nope. like, it was the fan-made one. The world the, champ. The world, Alex, the world yeah. championship one. Yeah, like, totally understand what they were going for. Uh, it is ripped from the comics directly, and they ju- he just put himself as the character instead of the character that was on the comic. Yeah. Uh, totally know what that was. Understand it. Appreciate it, because he really likes Stargirl as a character, sure. I, I just didn't like the pose itself. Poor guy. Poor guy. Uh, my favorite, for sure, is Giant Man, Zombie Giant Man, uh, holding Black Panther, or what's left of him, anyway. <laughs> so that's one of my favorite carrying poses. Uh, my oh, least... you know... Ooh, go for it. Uh, the one that I've liked recently is totally uh, Damian Wayne on the back of Goliath. Oh, nice. And then also with that is Bruce Wayne on back of the Hulk. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's Those are both good ones. Yeah. Uh, but my least favorite carrying pose is Superman carrying Wonder Woman because it looks real dumb. So, oh, yeah. That, that was completely unnecessary. Super awkward <laughs> figure. So weird. <laughs> Oh, you know what's a really, really stupid one? Oh, what's this up? is probably mostly due to the dial and not the. Uh, uh, do you remember that Spider-Man two by two hero click where there's like oh, yeah. around hitty sca- uh, cityscape <laughs> and he's like carrying that guy yeah. and then it's supposed to represent you know like the cover of, of yep. uh, Amazing Fantasy uh, you know the first appearance of Spider-Man <laughs> but it just looks so stupid and it's also just horrible yeah, it's just it so is. bad yeah besides being like a shelf piece it's uh, it's really bad even the city like if you look at the buildings it was looked like they took five minutes to design that they're like yeah it roughly resembles a city yeah why not totally <laughs> So that was that was pretty bad. Okay, uh, we're that's done? it. Those are Malcolm Rush questions. Really amazing. Uh, great question block. Really had uh, had us thinking. So I like it a lot. I had I had a lot of fun on this question block because I just deep delve into like the whole history of Hero Clicks from when I started playing and maybe a little bit before. And I was like, man, I remember seeing these pieces all the time. And I was I was like, man, I always really liked this. Or man, I always really thought this was stupid. And I still do. <laughs> The stuff that I thought was stupid back then Uh, did not age well at all. Yeah, it's pretty bad. All right, uh, last thing that I think we have for the community is a Jedi Legend Hero Clicks tip of the week. Shall you, I can. Take you to your destination, I will. Super easy one this week. Hypersonic speed is great, isn't it? But no risk, no reward, right? This one action has three parts to it. Move, attack, then move again. You must break away where applicable on each of the moving parts, which actually we did have um, a rules question that popped up in in this, right? Didn't we? Yeah, we did. Uh, Uh, Those uh, the the, the Hulk. Hulk. Yeah, the Hulk. Okay, so uh, the Hulk from the Mighty Thor Fast Forces, the one that has like the free quake anytime he moves, not as given a move action, but anytime he moves. Yep. well, what what do you do with one of these characters that was like pseudo salt meta play? Well, you try to break it even more. So what do you do with that? Well, you give it hypersonic speed. <laughs> so so um, because uh. of the change of hypersonic speed, you have two movements, right? And we know that because Jedi Legends here, Clay's tip of the week said so, and that's more trustworthy than the actual rule book. Um, so you move, you do the first attack from the hypersonic speed, you break away, you move again. Uh, that is two moves, but because you cannot interrupt an action anymore, like you used to be able to, for another action, what happens is you get a stackable quake for each one of those moves. So you hypersonic speed in, attack, move, and then quake, quake, which is dumb. <laughs> another way to break a character, ladies and gentlemen, if you did not know. Anything? Huh? What? Sorry. Yes. No. Hulk dumb. The Hulk is... Hulk's <laughs> terrible. Hulk's so bad. 
Um, no, that's really dumb. Uh, Hulk Exospecs are pretty great. Uh, it hasn't made the biggest splash, but it is kind of terrifying if that 12.4 is just running around at uh, hypersonic speeds, you know what I'm saying? That is a dirty little trick. It is. It, no, it really is. Also, whoever thought about that. Nah, good idea. Is a terrible human being. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good idea. If you're trying to win games, you're like, ah, oh, let's put three attacks in on one turn with this one character. And guess what does not exist anymore? The damage depletion modifier. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> so that's cool. That's cool. All right, that is the uh, community. Uh, not yeah, the whole community. That's all I got for anything. Anybody written in? Do you have yeah, anything that's else? That's it. No, that's what we got, man. That's it. All right, we have no birthdays this week. If you would like to give a shout-out to someone, or maybe it's you, to get a sexy, happy Arabian birthday on the Dial H podcast. No one was Don't born to... from May 5th. No one, no one was born 12th. this. No one was born yeah. in, uh, in this last week. Disappoint it! Uh, so you can let us know when the birthday is, who it is, and we'll give you that. Um, you know what I totally forgot was a What's thing? Up, man? Totally, this is my fault. Dial H Home Base Initiative. Why is this not ongoing? We need more home bases across the planet. Okay. To rehash, if you're new to the podcast, you can claim an area in your state if you are in the United States uh, or in your country if you are outside of the country. And I know you exist. Uh, all you have to do is let us know where you, the name of the venue that you attend and where it's at, and then you can claim it. However, only one of those places can be claimed per state or per, per country, so I'll, it's a it's kind of a short list. I'll go through the list on who who's already which states and places have already been claimed. So these are not applicable, ladies and gentlemen. So if you fall outside of these, let it, let us know. Florida, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Colorado, Michigan, Illinois, Kansas, Finland, and Maine are already call, called. So uh, wh where's our Californians? Where's our uh, there's probably someone in Utah that listens to us. Uh, that's a thing. So, yeah, claim, claim, claim a base. What's Utah? It's, it's that state with an additional lake in it, I think. <laughs> nah, sounds pretty salty to me, but all right, whatever. That was a dumb joke. My joke was dumber than it's yours, terrible. but yours almost kind of brought so it close. a little bit. <laughs> all right. Um, uh, don't forget, if you would like a heroic rank, you can jump on our Patreon. We would appreciate that. If you felt like by the time you got to the end of this, there was a little bit of value in there and to help you get you through your week, we would appreciate that. You get your heroic rank, and we will send you a pair of custom-made dial H4 Hero Clicks dice. I'm done, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, it's pretty great. Uh, I'm still going to try to work on a giveaway here to give away Lex Luthor. I'm still figuring out the parameters because I'm super lazy and haven't gotten to it. Sorry, guys. Life's a bit busy. Uh, but as a reminder, as always, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Bye, guys. Happy trails. Nice stuff.